we have three expressions here that we want to factor. And they're getting more difficult as we go from one to the next to the next. Now, if one of these things interests you more than the others, like, say, this one, well, skip to the middle of the video or skip to the end of the video for that last one. But I'm going to start off with the easiest one just so we can get an idea of the procedure that I'm using for factoring. Remember, there are many procedures. I'm going to use what we call the big X. And first step is I take the coefficients here. Now, there's no coefficient that I just circled, right? That's just one. We multiply it by this coefficient at the end, and I get negative four, okay? And the middle coefficient right here, I bring down like this. So the question becomes, what are two numbers that multiply to negative four, okay? But they add to three. So that's the procedure doing it. I need to find two numbers. There's only going to be two numbers that work for this. And if you think about it for a little bit, two numbers that multiply to negative four, well, it's either two and two, or it is one and four. One and four sound pretty good, but it needs to add to three. And remember, it needs to be negative four, not positive four. So I need a negative sign on one of them. And if I do it this way, four and negative one, they multiply to negative four, but they add to positive three. And then we're done. We basically just write it this way. We say x plus 4, x minus 1. Okay, so that's the factoring technique that I like best. Let's try it with this next one. 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Well, before you get too excited about the big S, remember, always, always factor out a GCF first. Okay, so I'm going to factor out a GCF of 2. What's left behind is x squared minus 4x plus 3. And we see now it's actually pretty similar to that last one. The factors will be a little bit different. Remember, I'm looking at a 1 right here and a 3 right here. 1x squared and a 3. Multiply those together. 1 times 3, you get 3. You take the 1 in the middle, this negative 4, the linear coefficients. That comes down here. And I need two numbers that multiply to 3 but add to negative 4. Well, that's a little different than before. Adding to negative 4, try these on. Negative 3, negative 1. You add them up, they're at negative 4. You multiply them, and they're at 3. Now, the negatives, my clue on the negatives was I knew it had to add to a negative number, that negative 4. If it were a positive 4, I would have picked 1 and 3. Okay, so now all we do, don't forget that GCF out front. I'm going to take that GCF and combine it with these two numbers we just found, x minus 3, x minus 1. This is in fully factored form. And I encourage you to take that GCF out first and just set it to the side. Otherwise, you may end up with something that is not in fully factored form. Here's an example. You might end up with x minus 3, 2x minus 2. Yes, that's correct, but it's not all the way factored because this guy still has a GCF inside it. All right? So let's move on to the hard one. This last one, if you look at it, you might think there's no GCF, right? 4 and 23. I mean, 20, 23 is a prime number, so we're, we're in a tough spot. But if you look more closely, you'll notice there is a negative sign. I can factor that out. It's not, it's not doing a whole lot of good, but it is a GCF. So let's factor out the negative sign and rewrite this as negative times 4x squared minus 23x plus 15. Now, we'll save that negative sign for later. Okay, we're going to use that at the end. But I need to multiply 4 and 15 together. That's going to give me 60. And then I take the term in the middle, just like before, and that's negative 23. Well, what are two numbers that multiply to positive 60, but they add up to negative 23? If you're stuck on this one, you can just imagine imagine that we're a positive 23. I, I would think of 20 and 3. Right? It might take you a couple guesses to get there. That's normal. But the only problem with 20 and 3 is they add up to positive 23. Well, negative 20 and negative 3 add up to negative 23. So here's what we've got. Now let, let's just try it out. There's still something going on here that I haven't talked about. Let's not forget the negative sign out front. And I say negative times x minus 20 times x minus 3. Well, what's wrong with this? I'll tell you one thing. If I multiply negative 20 and negative 3 together, I do not get 15. Okay, that's a problem. And how am I going to get 4x squared out of this? Well, there's one more gimmick I haven't told you yet. You take that number in front of the x squared, okay, this guy right here, 
you have to divide each of these terms by, okay? Right here also. So let's see what that turns into. First, what you do is you simplify what you can. This becomes negative x minus five. And over here, well, we're stuck. There's no more simplifying 3 fourths. And then the next step is this. We're going to take that 4 and we're going to move it in front of the x. And look what we have left. Negative x minus 5 on the left. And on the right, we have 4x minus 3. This is the factored form. Okay, and you can multiply it back together if you want. I think that's a good idea to double check. I haven't gone into the gimmicks of why this works, but it's a neat trick and it'll get you through even the hardest trinomials when you're having to factor them with a quadratic term that's not one.